Guys, I hope you like that demo of Audio Effector Plus for Final Cut Pro X. This is 40 from 40 TV. Let's talk about how the plugin works. I've got Final Cut Pro X open right now, but before I begin, let me go ahead and show you this uh, free website right here. It's called BeatsPerMinuteOnline.com. This is a BPM calculator. It can help you in order to determine the BPM of an audio track in order to sync up the effect with an audio track inside of Final Cut Pro X. The way it works, play an audio clip in the background, go ahead and press any of the keys on your keyboard. So for example, if I press A, if I press it once, nothing will happen. If I go ahead and press it to the beat, it's gonna go ahead and give me the BPM. Now obviously I didn't have a track playing, but this is to give you an example of how to use that tool right there. Now inside Final Cut Pro X, I have this clip go in my timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and press spacebar real quick to audition it. So you guys might be familiar with that clip. That's the clip of my boy Fez dancing. And it's also the clip that I did the introduction of how Mimic Plus, another plugin available from 40tv.com uh, slash shop that you can uh, pick up as well. So go ahead and check that out. But real quick, shameless plug, right? <laughs> real quick, let me select this clip in the timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and drag Audio Effector Plus on top of my clip. Next thing, by uh, just by chance, the default BPM is 128, which typically a lot of house music tracks are set to that. And this particular track that's inside of this uh, clip in the timeline is actually 128 BPM. But that's the first thing I'd wanna change if it wasn't, right? Next, you're gonna go ahead and pick the pick, uh, pick the pick. Pick the effect. <laughs> it's been a long day, man. Helicopters flying by, whatever it is, some reason I have to keep recording this tutorial. So, you're gonna go ahead and pick the effect. By default, it's set to strobe, which is an opacity change over time. If I press spacebar on my keyboard, you'll notice that it's uh, basically changing the opacity set to this BPM. Now, of course, we can half this. If we set this to 64, for example, it's gonna happen on every other beat. I'll go ahead and go back to the beginning of my timeline and uh, double, 100, uh, uh, double 128 would be 256, right? So I'll go ahead and set it to 256. I'm just showing you I'm just showing you that you can work in multiples, right? So besides uh, strobe, let's set it to spinner. And when I set it to spinner, I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to 128. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna talk about the solid background option. I can change this from black to any color that suits my project. Alternatively, I could click on the color swatch here. When it comes up, I can click on this little magnifying glass if I wanted to set it to the color of his jeans, or maybe if I wanted to set it to the shoe color, whatever it may be, and now that solid background. If I turn this solid background off, then this black area is transparent, and any video layer below is gonna show through. If I don't have a video, blair, video layer below, and this is turned off, and I render this clip, it will render as black. So I can turn it on, have that gray background, I'm gonna go ahead and press spacebar on my keyboard and we'll notice that this puppy is spinning um, based on the spinner strength right here. It's set to 10 degrees, I can keep turning this up. The most dramatic effect usually is somewhere around here, 45 degrees, etc. Now of course this can be animated and that's what happened in the demo. I animated it from 10 degrees to 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, this puppy is basically upside down. And at 360, it's regular. Nothing is gonna happen at 180 or 360 degrees. Now if I'm in spinner and I make a change to strobe strength, it's not gonna make a difference. That only applies to the strobe. The spinner strength only applies when you're in the spinner mode, etc. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to scalar. And basically what scalar does, I'll go ahead and press spacebar is it's gonna scale the image, let me go to the scale part, it's gonna scale the image from here all the way back up. And if I drag this, uh, this value up right here, basically it's gonna make my image smaller and allow me to zoom in and out, right? Scaling that image to the BPM set up here. Next, if we switch from scalar to shaker pan, basically what this is gonna do, it's gonna move your image from left to right. You see the little bar here? If I crank this up, it only goes to 100 in the slider, but you can go ahead and type in any value you want. So I can put this at 300, at 500, etc. Now when I press spacebar, you'll see 
that this puppy is moving from side to side. Now, when making changes to these values, I do have global position, rotation, and scale. So if I want to go ahead and move this further, for example, I can do that. Now, if I move it all the way over here and play it, you'll see what that's looking like, right? I can go ahead and put this back to zero. This uh, rotation, I can go ahead and rotate this. I can go ahead and change the scale of this. Now, when you make changes here to the position, rotation, and scale, it does affect what these values will do up here. Notice 500 pixels, when this is scaled down to 36%, doesn't look like it's as big of a move as it looks like when this is back at a 100% scale. So that's something to keep note of. So guys, I think that's everything in the plugin. Um, solid background color, the global positions and rotation and scale, and the five different effects along with their strength values and making sure you set that BPM. Another important thing to note, I'll go ahead and set it back to strobe. When in strobe mode, for example, if I select this clip, I go into the audio tab, I go ahead and uncheck the audio, this way I don't have audio actually playing, or maybe I have some spooky background playing. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this, it's back on strobe. I'm gonna crank this up. If you, have, if you have seizures, please don't watch this right now because it's definitely gonna blink quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and press spacebar. So this is a really quick way to get that spooky effect that can go to maybe some type of horror flick, et cetera, et cetera. This thing has unlimited potential, guys. I hope you like this plugin. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, go ahead and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, guys, I'm out.